What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Whatever Podcast. Let's get straight into it. If I have a partner, and this is one of the values that I think a woman can bring to my life. So if she can alleviate certain things in my life that make my life easier, and in so doing, I guess, let's say her earning potential- I know where he's going with that, I agree. Potential is $70,000 a year. My earning potential is $5 million a year. I bet Brian is pulling in five mil. That man's bagging. She can alleviate my time so that I can boost my income by 10%, wouldn't it make the most sense that she just stays at home and supports me in all the ways that she can support me and I can bring in an extra hundred or $200,000 a year versus her working a full-time job to make 70K when she could help me make 100, 200 extra, uh, 100, 200K extra a year by staying home and helping me and helping me in my mission. I wonder if this is even the right way to look at Bro, it. Bro, those numbers are so big. <laughs> 100, 200 K, Brian, how much money are you making, bro? But before I weigh in on what the, the gals answer. Help mate? Oh, have them answer what? I mean, I see where he's going with this. Like, I'd much rather have my woman, like this is the way me and Cass have it set up. She takes care of all the cooking, the cleaning, all the homely duties, the grocery shopping, which allows me to, to free up my time to create more content, do thumbnails, do more research. So I see where he's going with that. I just don't know if it was worded the best way. My thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just, my, my only thing is, is um, I think, and, and this is due to practical experience, of course, I don't have enough data to make this claim as being something which is solid. But this is just from kind of um, a mixture of anecdote and then what I perceive. Men will go through absolute hell, hell on earth, in order to take care of their women and their family. Mm -hmm. If they just have this kind of minimum threshold which is given to them. And the thing is, is that there's so much willfulness. It's almost like what happens is if you give somebody too much, they just begin to expect more and more and more. And I think that this is what ha has happened in modernity with women. Gluttony, dude. Is that even kind of these basic things, like the idea that Brian says, well, I'd like a woman to bow after I get out of the fucking mines and I go <laughs> off with coal all over my face and I just brought home $200,000 this year. This bitch can't make some noodles for me? That's the thing, right? It's like... It, it, it's Facts. a legitimate criticism in many mm -hmm. ways because what, what's really being said here is like, look at everything I'm bringing to the table. And I, I every day, day in, day out, and I don't complain, I don't, I don't whine. And I ask for such a small amount. And even then we have to quibble about it. And that's really what that's about, right? The bow has nothing to do with anything other than just show me that I actually. I 100% I, I agree with this. This is what you see in a lot of modern relationships. Anytime a woman wants to do something, there's zero justification that's needed for anything she wants to do. When a man wants to do something, you gotta justify it to the to the ends of the earth. You gotta say, baby, this is the reason why I wanna do it, and I gotta do it for, for this, and I gotta, I gotta make the, you know, you gotta make a whole claim, you gotta pitch it to the court, you gotta take it to litigation, <laughs> you gotta take it to trial, but girls wanna do something, they can justify it. So I, I, know, where, I know where they're going with this. Loki, does somebody want a bone? Free, sit, wait. Go to your place. Actually matter. And that all of modernity, which kisses women's asses, even though it's built on the backs of men, that you actually respect the fact that that's done. And that's all that's really being asked. And so I, I almost wonder if even this is the wrong way to look at it, right? The, the way that Brian looks at it. I think that women should be grateful. They should be grateful. They live Thanks. in the best society ever. And it's all built on the backs of not them. The air conditioning, which enables them to even exist. Everything which allows them to exist in modernity is built by men. And they're the most ungrateful. The clothes you're wearing, the phone you look at, the car you drive, the water you turn on, all of it's ran and managed by men. Snot nosed brats about it that you've ever seen. And there's really no cause for it because they bring nothing to the table, none of them, including the old bags here who bring nothing to the table by their own Shots fired. Own admission except their pussy. And that, to me, is why, uh, and when asked, this is all you get. I bring love and affection. You don't bring shit. 
to the table. <laughs> she's a runner, she's a track star. He's cooking these girls. <laughs> and that's why you can't even answer the damn question, no matter how many times we ask it. And it makes me sick because that is modernity. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Look at Brian. Well, like, um, first of all, I don't know if that is being addressed to Asia and I. Hey, I'm just throwing rocks and if it hits you, holla. You see how she's like, wait, you're talking about me. Yes, we're talking about you. Or being addressed to women in general, but you did point us out. However, you have no clue. Like, Good. What speaking. do you bring to the table besides your... Give me, give me a oh. real example. If you want a man to take care of you for the rest of your life, what do you bring to the table except your bunch of baggage? <laughs> I'm bringing a lot. I like I said earlier. If you're listening, well, let's start with the baggage you bring, and then we'll move on to the awesome stuff you bring. Call, let's start with the baggage. Donated one hundred dollars. Wilson well said. All right. Thank you. Negative hundred. He wants. Let's start with the baggage first. The baggage. Okay, my baggage personally. Yeah. Well, I have three kids. Uh -huh. Single mom. Shocker. I was in a marriage for 20 years. Okay, mm -hmm. solid. And basically, that's it. I'm, I'm that's single it? now. That's it? That's, the, do you realize how monumental what you just said was, that you have three yeah, children? Yeah, that's it. I was in a marriage for 20 years, and I have three kids. That's massive. That's a ton of baggage. Are you kidding me? That's it? <laughs> but that's what they try to do. They try to minimize it. And most of your life was taken by another man for 20 years. You well, can't give another man children. What are you bringing to the table, really? I, I've never dated a man anyways that wants more children. And second of all, I'm that not is, looking... Bro, that is, that is so dumb, dude. Stupid. I've never dated a man who doesn't want more children, but there are men out there that want more children. Are you kidding me? Come on. Looking for a man to marry, I'm. I would like to have a companion, and if I do uh -huh. find the right man, I'll marry again. However, I'm not out there searching for a man to care for me. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! You're not. She is. But if you're not, then what else are you bringing to the relationship besides again, just your vagina, really? Stupid. Like, what are you really bringing to a, to a man that he's just really going to desire? What makes you so special that you stand out besides this one attribute? Honestly. Honestly, I'm going to yeah. say I'm a great cook, great cleaner. Mm -hmm. I know how to communicate well. Mm -hmm. And I know how to please a man. Yeah. and the Okay, maid. so sex was a quarter of it, right? And the rest we can buy. I can get a cook. I can get a maid. What, what are we what are we really getting out of you that you end up with have to be exceptional they have to be exceptional in their field or they can't bring home the kind of money which would be required to take care of you and whatever the graduation gifts for your kids are well, whatever the all, no, whatever the no. whatever the things are which are necessary to move over to, our, I, to the resources dated, to your children your offspring right I've dated men that make less money than me and I never had a problem with that at all well you're not with them for a reason right well, it had nothing to do with finance. <laughs> Stupid. I love it when they say that. Well, I've dated guys that were shorter than me. I've dated guys that made less money than me. But you're not with them anymore. Dummy. Sure, I'm sure it didn't. It just happened to be a happenstance that they made less than you and you're still not with them, right? Had nothing to do with the reason why we're not together, honestly. Oh. Okay. I believe you. Don't you find that suspicious? But in any case, no, I don't really see much of Chat, do we believe her? Personally, I don't I don't way of attributes. I don't think that either of you are particularly stunning. I don't think you're particularly funny. I don't think you're particularly engaging. And if you can cook and clean, great. So can all the twenty year old girls who are sitting there right next to you, all of them. So what exactly are you bringing that's so monumental that offsets the baggage to age to a relationship why somebody should pick you? That's the question. And it's not even to be mean. It should just be pointed. It should just point out something that's obvious to men and that women just kind of pretend doesn't exist. Well, you can ask that question to anybody, man or woman, right? You can, and that's why I'm Don't asking. move the goalpost. I love this move. Asking it to you? Yeah, well, friendship, if you find the right match with the right person, friendship, quality. Is that what you guys want, friendship, chat? personality, companionship, someone that you can laugh with, someone that you can share stories with. I can share stories with my dog. 
Loki, you want to hear a story? Look, he perked up. He's ready. I'm telling you, you can share stories with a dog, bro. Yeah, they can do all that with a 25-year-old. daily activities with and have fun with. They can do all that with a 25-year-old. You sure can. You sure can. You know, but you that's know my what? point, though. It's like, so what do you really bring into the table? Well, here? I can that's say so the same great, thing. You know? I could date a younger guy, but I choose not to because you're not on the same page, like mentally, Well, hang on. You can a younger guy. That doesn't mean he's going to marry you. Facts. True. Yeah, and that's most older women have this experience. Yeah, younger that's men will bang them, but though. they ain't going to marry them, and they ain't going to be with them long term. You can't give them kids, and so they end up dumping. Bro, chat, think about think back when you were in your twenties, bro. Think back when you were in your twenties. Would you have married a chick that was like ten years older than you, bro? There's no way. I would have never married a chick that was ten years older than me. Are you out of your freaking gourd? Taking her home. Hey, mom. This is this is Shelly. She's 40. <laughs> She's 35. Son, you're 25. Why don't you get a girl that's 23 that can give you kids and you get her youth. You get her fertility. No, mom, I want a girl that's... I want a girl that's almost 40. No. Us as men, we'll bag it. But we won't tag it. Man, that it's another quote. We will bag it, but we won't tag it, brother. That's what happens. In fact, this gal next to you said... She had that very experience. She dated a younger man, and he decided, ah, you know, I actually want kids, and you can't give them to me. These are some big, that's all, by the way, all of that is baggage, all of it. If I, you can't give them kids, that's baggage. If you have kids, that's baggage. baggage. If you X, Y, Z, that's all baggage. It's not just, I have an ex-husband, and I have three children. It's, I'm older that's baggage one it's i have three children that's bad i will say she's been married for 20 years she actually looks pretty good for her age i'm not gonna cap but the thing is the baggage is still intact baggage too i can't give you children that's more baggage all of this is baggage everybody has baggage at a certain mm -hmm. age and that's why i feel like for me personally i like to date guys my age because we probably have equal amounts of baggage, right? I'm not going to be no, unrealistic and do. date somebody that's a lot. I don't think most men are out there that are divorced, say he's been married 20 years and have three kids. I think this is your thing, and you're trying to move the goalposts of what I think you're doing. Younger than me, that's going to view me as an older person with a lot of baggage. Men your age, in comparison to you, are going to be highly pursued by almost all women in your age bracket. Most, and, most of them because they've accrued a ton of resources. So your dating competition's even... And put it on a t-shirt. If he's good enough for you, he's good enough for a few, baby. Higher in your age bracket, oh, I, I would argue, than in the 20s, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the thing is, is, is you have to be exceptional in your age bracket to net these men. Because, for one thing, their libido's way down, Right. They're not necessarily just looking at you for sex like a lot of the younger men would be. And so that's one of the big netting points that women have. I'm young and beautiful, and all these men want to bang me. And that's a big netting point, a big selling point. Men in your age bracket, their libido goes significantly down. Now you got to actually bring something to the table. That's why women in your age bracket have such a hard time netting a good quality man. Right? Am I wrong? No, I hear you. And our dating yeah. pool is so much smaller than when we're... Well, that's why I say when women are younger, man, the, your dating pool is an ocean. You have oceans of men. Tons of guys to pick from. You know, 18 to 24. 24 to 25, you're looking at about a lake. You know, 30 to 35, maybe looking at around maybe a pool. You know, maybe a pool. And that's at best. 35 to 40, maybe a puddle. <laughs> maybe a puddle and then 40 on it's a bottle cap a bottle cap full of water right here that's what you're looking at honey and, and you add kids to that bro it's already it's a wrap and here here's here's my take on this if a chick is hot we'll rate her one through ten and it's relationship marketplace value sexual marketplace value what i mean by that is is relationship marketplace value if she doesn't if she's a virgin doesn't have a high body count things like that you have a high rmv and if you're hot, you have a high SMV. So like, let's take a corn star, for example. A corn star would have a high SMV, but a very low RMV. So basically what you do is you take the median of those two numbers. So if she's a 10 out of 10 when it comes to SMV, but she's a zero out of 10 when it comes to relationship in uh, marketplace value, then that average is a five, right? So this chick right here, um, she's probably every day of 40. 
She looks good for her age, though. Um, but she's probably every day of 40. Her her sexual marketplace value, I'd probably give her about a five. Somebody else has had that. 20 years, you pooped three kids out. A lot of damage has been done downstairs. Um, so probably give her about a five. And then let's give her a relationship marketplace value. I'd probably give her about a three, maybe a four at max. Let's do a three. Um, five and three, median, four. So you're a four in the market right now. So you can't go around being demanding. You got to go out and get what you can get. And the thing is, as women get older, they start to live the reality that younger men have always lived. Nobody's paying attention to you. Nobody's out there to save you. Nobody cares the struggles that you're going through. And that's what we as men go through at like the ages of 18 to 24. So it's so hard to feel bad for these women because every guy, chat, and let me know, let me know. When you were younger, have you went through this where it was like impossible to get attention? Girls would not pay attention to you. They're like, you don't make enough money. You're not tall enough. You're not big enough. You don't have this. You don't have that. Like everything is just a focus on all, and on all the inadequacies and deficiencies that we have. It's not how great we are. Our youth doesn't get us in the door. Our experience gets us in the door. And so these ladies seem to forget that. It's, it's just alarming to me that they really don't realize like, oh, I have to bring a lot to the table just to get a regular guy. And even when I do bring a lot to the table, I'm a four at best. It's sad, but it's true. Let me know if you agree. Way younger. smaller. Yeah, way so smaller. So they're slim pickings. Slim, on both sides, slim men pickings. and women. So that's, that's why it's not, I'm not asking these questions. To it's not slim pickings for men. It's slim pickings for y'all. Be mean or cruel to you. I'm asking them pointedly because I understand that in your age bracket, the dating market is even more vicious in many cases than it is for younger people. Mm -hmm. Your options are way slimmer. Mm -hmm. And you have to be exceptional to stand out to men who don't just value you for your which younger men do. Right. And so when I ask these questions, what do you bring to the table? That's what I'm asking it for. So what do you, now that you understand, what do you bring to the table? I just told you earlier. Go ahead and tell me again. Stupid. Friendship. Stupid. Good personality. Someone to talk to. Someone to support. Stupid. I would definitely support him emotionally. Good conversation. A buddy to go places with, to travel, to hang out. And what makes those Stay qualities? Up at late nights. Sure. What makes those qualities exceptional in comparison to other women in your same age bracket? I'm a good listener, and I'm down to earth. I'm not fake or phony. Okay. Wait. All right. I'm. I'm. <laughs> Nothing is exceptional. I'm. I'm. Re I keep it a buck. I'm a. I'm a real one. Stop. Do you have fake titties? <laughs> uh, I'm not fake or phony on the inside. Uh, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Well, didn't you just hear him? Our dating pool is slim I... and picking, so we gotta be a- Y'all got these fake bodies, but y'all want us to keep it real? Man, man, oh man. Makeup, fake up, fake eyelashes, fake boobs, fake butts, but y'all want us to keep it a buck. Above and beyond, right? To but you said you're not fake. <laughs> I'm talking personality-wise, oh, internally. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Brian cooked her. <laughs> She's cooked. Get her a chef hat. She's cooked. Gordinia Ramsay. Look at that side eye. That was a vicious side eye. Crickets. Yeah. Cue the crickets. It's a, well, it's, a, it's actually an interesting phenomenon. You know, um, if I were to ever start a dating show... I think I would probably focus mostly on 45 to 55, even to early 60s people. And the reason is, is because the dating market there, I have so many people reach out to me who are in this age GMD Jim donated $99. Andrew Wilson, nailing IT again. We can hire a cook, house cleaner, and escort, if so desired. Best. We also have friends. What makes all that baggage worth IT? Yeah, I was just, I was just kind of going to dive into this. But the number one complaint that I hear from men in this age bracket, in their 50s especially, is like, look, uh, my libido is way down. I don't value women anymore the same way I did in my 20s, where I wanted to have every single day, uh, you know, multiple times a day in many cases, this type of thing. Right? Bro, you're wearing my back out, bruv. Women in their 20s. Old man marine donated $100. Andrew, you're amazing. Ex-wife never satisfied, never happy or grateful even though I made more money every year. Vacations, jewelry, health ins for four of us. She thinks she can do better. 
Now she broke. Yeah, that's a very common story too. But anyway, yeah, so... It's so hypergamy, this- dude. Like, women always think as they get older, they can do better. And the thing is, the opposite is true. Your value goes down as you get older. And as men, we gain experience and our value in the market goes up. That's what I hear commonly in this age bracket is, because I don't value those things, right? The women that I'm looking for, they need to bring me one thing, one big quality, which is that I don't have to take care of all their bullshit and uh, and they, they, they fracture my peace, right? They fracture my peace. And so what what is the point of me having a companion, right? If I'm only gonna have with her you know, once a week because my libido is way down, if she brings all this baggage to the table that I then have to deal with. That's the number one complaint that I hear. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Men in their 50s, not gonna be boning as much as men in their 20s. Makes total sense. Women in their 50s, of course, they, they can still, you know, have the, the same kind of libido, but it goes down for them too. And so they're asking, what is me, me as an established man in my 50s, let's say, I have all these resources, why the fuck should I share them with her? Mm-hmm. And, well, and a lot of these modern women, even these older women, feel like they're entitled to somebody else's time, energy, and resources. Why, why are you so entitled? I don't have a great answer to that. They don't. What is? What are the things that they're bringing to the table where you should share those resources with them? And every time I ask the women this, they kind of come up with the same type of answers. Well, I'm funny, I'm cute, I'm snarky, I'm quirky. I have all these different things, but they're like, all of them are like that. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if everybody's special, nobody is special, buddy. That's how it is. Let's jump into the Reddit. Let's see if we have anything in the queue here. Um, Andrew was cooking, bro. So good interviewing him. Such a good dude. Really laid back to something I liked about him. Was there any other whatever clips? Uh, this is from Des X Curiosity. What is this all about? Dr. Drew. Oh, I know this is going to be a cooker. Let's check this one out. Men cheat with women that are less sexually attractive than the girl they're with. Good uh, question. You, well, why does yes, it because they're not a headache. They're not entitled. We do this because they are our piece, not a piece of the problem. You can get a hot chick, but she'd be running your ear off. Matter whether she's less attractive or not. Because if she was more attractive, would you be would you be like, ah, oh, well then it's okay. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't feel as bad. No, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes you can you well, can che- They're realizing that their looks really don't matter. Cheat up and <laughs> your girl don't have no choice to be like, oh my god, you yeah. <laughs> men love all different body types. We just love the best version of that type. So maybe she's a flavor that he hasn't tasted yet. Well, hey, that's what I used to say, the Baskin Robbins, baby. To, it's to the truth. Sort of- hey, Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, buddy. Buddy boy. Um, I mean, to that though, a man will, a man will get with a chick that's not as hot as his girl in chat. Let me know what you think about this. I think a guy would get with, his, uh, get with a girl that's not as hot it's because she's not as much of a freaking headache. A lot of the times, hot girls are a freaking headache. And the reason being is because hot girls haven't had to do as much work with their personality. They haven't had that like ego death that Jake, uh, Jake Rattlesnake and I talked about in our interview, which is in, on the channel as well. They haven't had that ego death. They haven't ever been checked and been made humble. Us as men, we get that all the time. We're made humble. You have an ego death. 18 to 25 is usually when you get checked and you have to check your ego at the door. Women usually don't get that. The prettier a woman is, more the more of a pass she gets. Chat, do you agree? That's why, like, go back to high school. Go back to college and think real quick. Who were the coolest chicks? They were the girls that were... Big back, big back. The, the girls that weren't that cute were usually the most fun to be around because they had to work on their personalities. The hot chicks didn't. They just got all the attention, but the girls that were beat had to go work on that personality. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I knew multiple girls in high school that were just so much fun to be around, but they weren't hot. And it is what it is. Like, I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. So, it's like, I don't know. But, but do you guys agree? There's a Here's another one from Des. Oh, good Lord. Have mercy. This girl crying, crying. She's got the snot rolling. Let's see it, baby. Please, 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 please,
What kind of world do we live in where a normal, regular girl cannot find just a regular guy out here to date? Huh? There's regular guys everywhere. What are you talking about? Because these guys don't want a real woman. <laughs> You're right. We want a fake woman. <laughs> Where's Elon Musk's robots at? Optimus? <laughs> They want a fantasy. They want... Chad, who do you think is more delusional, men or women in the dating market? Keep it a buck. I think it's women. To live in this fake fantasy world, they would rather jack off to some screen, to some robot, rather than... Optimus, telling you. ...actually deal with a real human being and what comes... Keyword from. deal. Ain't nobody want to deal with you. ...comes with that. You know why? Because it's easier. And I am done. I'm done. Let's unpack this. Honest crying, not a single tear. Bro, what? Hi, how, how, how you doing? Honest crying, not a single tear. Make it make freaking sense. Des, always dropping the bombs in there, Maddie. Buddy, I really do appreciate you. Um, but Loki, did you have a good time today? I guess the moral of the story is, is ladies, you got to understand, as you get older, your value goes down. It is what it is. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Don't shoot the messenger here, okay? But it's just like that. And the reason us men, we don't have any sympathy for the for these women is because they're living the life that we had to live when we were 18 to 25. Nobody paying, paying attention to us. Nobody putting us on a pedestal. We were ignored. We didn't have any of the things that women actually wanted. And so y'all are living that life. That's why it's so, it's so hard to feel bad for these older women when you made your bed. Now you got to sleep in it. It just sucks because they see us as men. We age like, we age like fine wine, but women age like you know, yogurt left out in Texas in July. It just, it sucks. I don't, I, I don't like that it's that way, but it is. It's just the reality. So, I don't know. But do you guys agree? Do you guys agree that, you know, as men get older, they advance to their career. Usually their value goes up. And usually as women age, their value goes down. Us as men, we're looking for fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, no kids, quaint, uplifting, elegant, empathetic, natural, nurturing. That's what we're looking for. And ladies, you're looking for somebody who's keen, impervious, noble, and groomed. And the thing is, to be keen, I need experience. To be impervious, I need trials and tribulations. To be noble, I have to go through things. And to be groomed, i got to learn how to groom. That's what a king is. Well, that's just my two cents. But Loki, did you have a good time today? Uh, you're not going to pay attention to me? Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.